Well, if it isn't old Dabo Sweeney in the news again, his brother actually, uh, brother of Clemson coach Dabo Sweeney arrested for kiddie porn, apparently. And the report is uh, Henry Sweeney III, brother of Clemson football coach Dabo Sweeney, was arrested in April for allegedly distributing child sex sexual abuse material According to a warrant, Sweeney disseminated material containing a visual representation of a minor alleged in sexual activity and or appearing in a state of sexual explicit nudity via a file sharing link referred to as Mega. If convicted, Sweeney could face up to 10 years in prison. So Dabo's brother looks like he's been distributing child porn and there's just some weird thing that's things that are going on with Clemson football right now guys I want to get to some other stories but first you guys see that Justin Ross situation where he ends up going undrafted a lot of people don't remember but Justin Ross was on that was a freshman on that team with Trevor Lawrence uh, when they destroyed Alabama back in, what was it, 2018 when Trevor Lawrence was a true freshman. Justin Ross was also a freshman and had an unbelievable game against Alabama. It looked like he was a lock for the first round. He has this chronic injury and then goes undrafted. I think Clemson's medical staff cleared him, let him play. And NFL staffs want nothing to do with him. Now he did sign, he did sign as an undrafted free agent with the Chiefs, but a very interesting situation. And then there's also been rumblings out of Clemson, South Carolina, about a situation surrounding Jackson Carmen, who was a former five-star offensive tackle out of the state of Ohio. He signed with Clemson, and I believe his freshman year there was an incident that got swept under the rug. I don't want to comment too much on it. And really, I don't even want to harp on Clemson recruiting, uh, you know, very badly because Clemson does value their program. And just from an outsider's perspective, a lot, a lot of casual people think Clemson is one of the teams that cheats the most in recruiting. This day and age, that is not true. Clemson is actually very selective when it comes to offering kids. And when it comes to overall blatantly cheating, they are kind of with Ohio State and Alabama to where those programs are not interested in paying recruits at this point, the name, image, likeness, just to come to their school. Now we do have a report. We actually have a nice little statement statement from our friend Jimbo Fisher. Let me see if I can find this really quickly. Jimbo Fisher wants rules and guardrails for NLI to make it fair for everyone across the board. So in other words, after Jimbo cheated blatantly on the recruiting trail in 2022 with the blatant use of boosters to get a massively unbelievable class for 2022. Now Jimbo wants rules. This guy is a total buffoon and I hope Texas A&M gets a major bull ban. But Jimbo already got his super class via cheating, via explicit use of the NLI. Now he wants the rules. He's like, I got my guys. Yes, let, let's make it fair for everyone, right? This dude is a total buffoon. This is the same guy that came out on National Signing Day and said everyone who said, you know, Texas A&M was cheating, you know, was delusional. It, it's so disrespectful to the kids that chose our school. It's just, the, the, the dude is a total, total buffoon. And he comes out and says this, it's sad. And I think Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M, they know they blatantly cheated. They blatantly used NLI to get, you know, the best recruiting class in history. Now they're starting to backtrack. They're starting to say, we're not going to do it again. We want there to be rules where, you know, don't bull ban us, don't do anything. Because you've got other stories, and this is another interesting story that just recently came out. New on NLI. NCAA enforcement has been unwilling, unable to enforce bylaws, fearing antitrust suits 
while badly understaffed down 15 to 20 staffers. So what a mess the NCAA is. Once again, they cannot enforce anything. They have no authority. That's why yesterday I suggested we create a separate en entity to police all of this crap, make a board, you know, completely independent of the NCAA, completely independent of conferences, because if you have a board that where there's like a member from each conference, there's going to be bias. I want everything done independently when you investigate these programs for cheating during the NLI period. And if I was part of this board, I would come out and I would say, listen, we're bull banning Texas A&M for a minimum of five years to make a statement. Because right now, this is what happens. The NCAA is a total joke. All of these programs can cheat. The NCAA can't even enforce it. It says it right here. Uh, but leaders are strongly urging them to enforce the new NLI guidelines or else, quote, they need to hit them hard. Officials reveal to uh, Sports Illustrated more specifics on new NLI guidelines that are expected to publish next week. It's retroactive. Oh, that's bad news for Texas A&M. That's bad news for Tennessee. Schools with boosters who have communicated struck deals with players who haven't signed yet with schools should be sanctioned, AD say. So in other words, extremely bad news for Tennessee who signed... The, a, a 2023 five-star quarterback, he's a top 10 overall player from the state of California. They signed him to a, to a multi-year, $8 million contract. If this is true, which I doubt it is because the NCAA has absolutely no governing power, nobody thinks they're going to do anything. If they actually do do something about NLI and the ADs push them to do something because they know it's gotten completely out of control. The vast majority of ADs want these programs like Texas A&M, like Tennessee, to be, to be hit extremely hard with sanctions because this is just horrible for the sport. The whole idea of NLI and college kids prof profiting off of name image likeness, it's like C.J. Stroud has an amazing year for Ohio State, so he gets an NLI deal, so he gets a sponsorship because Companies want to work with C.J. Stroud because he's a great young football player, and he is a and he can use his name, image, and likeness to attract money. It's not going to C.J. Stroud as a 17-year-old kid as a five-star recruit from the state of California and saying, if you come to my school, I will give you $2 million. That's what Tennessee is doing. That's what Texas A&M is doing. That is what most of these 80s are talking about. And then Jimbo Fisher, very interestingly enough, comes out with a quote yesterday saying, we need to have guidelines. Jimbo, that's not how it worked. You already blatantly cheated. You already blatantly abused the name image likeness to your advantage in 2022 by signing the number one recruiting class in the nation. If you think you can just skate by by making these quotes and falling in line with all the other aid with all the other ADs right now, you are completely mistaken. And I, again, you have to come down hard on these programs, especially a program like AM. Tennessee, listen, Tennessee's just desperate. They signed the fight. Obviously, we all know when it comes to like a five star quarterback, top 10 player from California, the only reason you're committing to Tennessee is because of a massive NLI deal. Let's just call it what it is. Let's just call it what it is. So it's like with Tennessee, these some of these programs are really desperate. They just want to get five stars in the door so they can get better because generally, if you start recruiting better, your program does better. That's not how it always works. We've seen with Texas and, and they recruit well every year and they have just been stuck in the mud. But overall, when you recruit better, your program does better and... It really looks like a lot of these ADs are pissed. They're sick of hearing about this. And you've got these programs like a Tennessee, like a Texas A&M, who are in deep trouble. You know, I've talked to some people that are Tennessee fans. They're scared. They're freaking out. They've been having nightmares the past few days. Texas A&M fans, the same. And then Jimbo Fisher. You can tell Jimbo is scared because he's coming out and he's saying, oh, you know what? Now we need guidelines. We need rules in place. When it comes to the actual rules, I still think... 
uh, the biggest issue is going to be the tampering. Because if you enforce or if you put in some law and actually enforce it, meaning if you say, listen, you cannot do this, you cannot have your boosters talk to recruits, you know, when they're recruits, when they're in high school at all. That is illegal. And if you do it, and if they show power, and if they say, we will bull ban you, like you can enforce that. But there's still going to be tampering workarounds by telling a kid, say you've got a five-star receiver coming to visit you, you can say, listen, dude, we cannot give you money right now, but we have a deal in place because you are a five-star. We have a deal in place so when you come on campus and when it's officially legal to do NLI deals with you, we will have the deal in place. That's the type of tampering that a board is going to have to stop. Number one, obviously, you're going to have to stop with these boosters offering kids straight up money just to come to the school. Name image like this was never about because a kid's a five star he's going to get $2 million to come to my school. Like, I'm a booster. I'm going to go offer you $2 million to commit. The whole idea was you recruit the kid. The kid chooses the best place for his development, where he has the best relationships with the quarterback coach, the running back coach, whatever his position group coach is, wherever, whatever schools he feels at home, you know, with, safe with. He makes the best decision for his future. And then when you're a recruit and you're in Knoxville, Tennessee, and there's NLI opportunities because you're a good player and you're playing in a college town, you can take advantage of your name, image, likeness for profit. That was the whole idea of NLI. It's gone completely off the rails to where the high school kids now are getting offered all this money from programs that are desperate to be relevant again, like a Texas A&M. You could argue Texas A&M is already relevant, but they're not one of those top five or six schools in the nation, and that's what they want to be. They're not Clemson. They haven't had the success Clemson's had. They haven't had the success Ohio State has had. They haven't had the success Georgia's had. Alabama, Oklahoma. There's schools that are on another level right now. Um, Texas a and not on that level. They want to get to that level. And then, of course, you have a step below it, a program like Tennessee who is just trying to get back in national relevancy. They're so desperate. They're throwing you know, massive seven-figure deals at five-star quarterbacks from the state of California. And everyone knows it's horrible for the sport because the kids are making decisions not based off of where they're going to be developed the best, not based off of where they have the best relationships. But these are young kids making decisions based off of who is going to pay them the most money. And that could be extremely detrimental in terms of their development down the line. So all of this stuff is really interesting. It's all evolving. I think the next hurdle, the number one hurdle is you're going to have to get these schools and these boosters to understand it, you know, the NCAA or if they create a board, like an NLI board to combat this type of stuff, to combat, to combat this type of tampering. Uh, the number one hurdle, you're going to have to start enforcing it strictly and you're going to have to come down on a university really hard so and make an example out of them so all the other boosters know if you do this and we catch you you will face severe consequences for your university that's what I would do and then of course you've got the whole issues with the transfer portal uh, that's you know the tampering that's going on in there USC reportedly contacting Jordan Addison before he even was thinking about transferring and they basically said listen you know you're making barely anything at Pittsburgh University you know the name image likeness opportunities we have here in SoCal you know the quarterback you could be playing with here for one year you could up your NFL draft stock how do we solve that when it comes to the transfer portal, I don't think it's solvable. I mean, you could create transfer portal windows, which is what they're doing, but in terms of actually, uh, you know, stopping this tampering, the kids are just going to enter the transfer portal just to see what they're worth. I mean, that's capitalism 101. You go, you see what your worth is. That's what Jordan Addison's doing right now. Jordan Addison very well could sign or could transfer to USC, but he's right now he's in the portal because he wants to see what his offers are. Who's going to offer me the most money? Is Alabama desperate enough to offer me offer me more than the three million dollars that USC is offering me? There's a bigger issue with the transfer portal. The name, image, likeness stuff. At least you can police to where now the biggest issue is going to be the tampering when you get a five star recruit on campus and you tell him, listen. We cannot give you a deal right now because the NCAA created whatever board they end up creating to combat, you know, boosters paying kids to come to the school, but we have a massive NLI deal set up with you. How do you stop that? 
That's going to be the next big issue, but I hope they're able to enforce something, and I hope they make an example out of Texas A&M and Tennessee, and you see that stuff saying, this needs to be retroactive. The ADs want it to be retroactive, so a school like Tennessee, who is giving kids absurd amounts of money just to come to the school, they need to be reprimanded and they need to be sanctioned. Uh, they're trying to make it retroactive, so the schools that are doing it right now get caught like a Tennessee, like a Texas A&M. There's other schools doing it. There's Miami, of course. We haven't heard of a big-name football player that's gotten a deal from Miami, but you've got Miami. And then, of course, you've got the number one recruit in the nation last year who went to, uh, what was it, Jackson State, uh, who got a massive deal to go there. So this thing uh, is just completely off the rails, and we will see what happens in terms of it's nice to see they're trying to combat it, but it is just such a tough topic to talk about because there's so many factors at play when it comes to NLI. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you are following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. Thank you for watching.